So if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know how much I love this little guy. This is a Raspberry Pi, and I credit this little machine right here with a lot of my knowledge when it comes to networking and Linux. Now, truth be told, I was one of those nerds that at 12 years old built my own computer, and in those days, it was something called DOS. Well, that served me quite well because learning DOS gave me a great background for Linux, as well as kind of getting into the programming world. Nerd. You're a Nerd. Now, my day job, I'm in that world, but I don't necessarily do programming per se. I'm on the cloud side of things uh, versus doing programming, but I work with a lot of programmers and I write code by myself for my own internal needs when I have to. Lately, I've been using a lot of AI to assist with that, but we'll talk about that much later and not in this video. I will have a video coming up on how I leverage AI, but in this video, we we're actually talking about how I had a bunch of these laying around and what I decided to do in order to solve a couple different problems. One, save a little bit of money. Two, take control of my privacy and control of my data back from large greedy corporations that probably sell your data and do worse with it, especially if it's free. And then lastly is because I'm a nerd and I've had a whole lot of fun over the past year building out my personal home lab. Okay, so what does all that mean? Well, we're gonna do kind of a DIY and I'm gonna walk you through my home labbing experience just in case you might be interested in doing it. Get those nerds! Nerd! Nerd! And then, like I said, I had a couple of these hanging around and oftentimes with these things, you really gotta think, what, what am I gonna use it for? Well, when I learned about home labbing and in particular using things like Docker, which is just allows you to take this and basically in layman's terms, cut it up into a bunch of different pieces and have a whole bunch of different software that you're hosting on this that you may access internal to your own home network or even external to your home network. And these are really great options because they're low power and uh, well, they don't really uh, have a fan, so they're silent. You could put fans on them, and I would recommend it if you're using a Raspberry Pi 5, uh, but this is actually a four. This is Pyramone's case, just pulls the heat right out. It's just one big heat sink, but these are awesome things. And in fact, my first foray, I just did a cluster of Raspberry Pis. I had five Pis. They are now in my server rack, which is over there, and that is basically the backbone still to this day of my home lab. Now I do have another piece of equipment and that is a computer I built that is an AMD, I think Ryzen 9. Uh, I've put something called Proxmox on that and a bunch of hard drives. Now the reason for that, Proxmox is the OS and that's a OS that allows you to virtualize any other OS you want. So again, kind of like Docker, we're able to cut this up though with operating system and host your own OS or own instances of OS, so your own virtual machines, if you will. And one of those virtual machines I have is actually running something called TrueNAS. Now TrueNAS is a NAS software. Now that NAS software is kind of the storage center of my entire network that I have here at the house and my home lab. That's because it has a couple different hard drives, few of them are rated together for backup, and then I use a couple different pieces of software to then spread that data around a couple different other nodes. And when I refer to nodes, I'm just referring to little tiny Raspberry Pis, most more than likely, or instances, or computers that are physically on my network that I can save to. So I use a couple different pieces of software to do that. I also use a couple pieces of software to host my media so that people inside and outside my network can get to things like my legally ripped copies of movies. Uh, I also use um, a piece of software to host my own music uh, that I have legally backed up as well. And I use another piece to then stream that out to my phone when I'm on the road without even opening up any ports. Now, the piece of software that I use to do that, to not open up any ports, is a, basically one of the backbones of how I access a lot of my stuff outside the home in a very safe and secure manner without having to open up any networks. It basically creates your own private virtual network that you can attach to outside your home and stream your services, even though they might live right here in this office. You're probably asking, what's the difference? Actually, I have a, a Venn diagram to show you the difference. Uh <laughs> 
So home labbing in general doesn't have to be that expensive. It can be a couple different Raspberry Pis, but overall there's a lot of different advantages to hosting your own services and microservices. And if it is something that interests you, well, I encourage you to like and subscribe because we're getting ready to do a whole series on this. So with that, we will go into the hardware. We will go into the software. We talked a little bit about that. And then we will probably wrap it all up with a showcase of how it all works together. But very quickly, I, we talked about the hardware, Raspberry Pis, one computer I built. I just added another computer that I built that's pretty sick that actually has hard drives that um, stick up vertically. So that's another piece of NAS. Uh, and then I have a Steam Deck. And the reason I include the Steam Deck is because I'm also a uh, player of retro games. So I do a lot of emulation. It's just that when we get together, bad things happen and people get hurt. Yeah, that's the point. It's funny. That's on my network as well. And that is actually running Linux too. So if you have a Steam Deck, you can even do a lot of this stuff. Now the Steam Deck, I caution you on that. Um, in retrospect, after saying that, just it has a different new type of Linux on it that is a little bit more difficult to play with. Um, so maybe just use that as your gaming node like I have it. Uh, but there, in theory, you could put another operating system on it or um, you could even use the same one if you, if you know your way around Linux um, to make it persistent so that when you make these changes, it isn't overridden by the new kind of safeguards of the new flavors of Linux, but I won't go into that right now. And the software is basically everything is pretty much running off of Docker. Uh, and um, then I'm using Portainer, of course, and I'm doing everything as a container on each of these different machines so that I can then serve them out and they won't have any conflicts. So that is basically the overview. We'll get into more details in the trenches a little bit later, but I hope this kind of is a good intro of what I'm going to show you. Let me show you this. I'll bring the light down there. Here is the main piece in my kit. This is this little server rack that I built over a year ago. And you know, that's the box I was just talking about with Proxmox on it. Up here is my Raspberry Pis. Uh, and of course, then I also have an Ubiquiti um, switch that basically is um, powering my Raspberry Pis through Cat5. And then below that, you can't see it. I actually have a little box that I built as well. And that is an Intel box. Oh, you might not be able to see me. Hold on. And that is an Intel box. Uh, it's an N100, which is a nice little cheap uh, processor from Intel. And that is actually running PFSense, which is actually a way that you can control and build your own router. So that's going to give you even more control so you can keep those creepy eyes of the ISPs away. Um, and I will talk about my R stack. If you don't know what an R stack is, well, boys, ladies, gentlemen, they, gentle people, whatever you want to call yourself, we will go over my R stack. And that is just, let's say a, um, hmm, how do we put it? It's a torrent stack for doing legally and free downloaded things. Um, that's included in a container and running on a VPN. So all these things I'll go over, it's too much to go over now. That's just a brief summary anyways. I hope you'll come along for their journey. We'll still have other things, reviews, stuff like that. But this is the home labbing intro. Well, anyways, I'm Hill Phantom. I'll see you next time.